Hello, in this pop-up Ology tutorial I'll be showing you how to fold the Seaside Pier design from my range of origami architecture pop-up cards available online. So once you have uh, downloaded and cut your template you should end up with something that looks like this. Uh, this uh, design is actually not one of the simplest um, projects to do so uh, you might want to start with one of the more simple designs to begin with. But if you like a challenge, then just go for it. Um, in order to begin, all we need to do is just, as always, just establish a baseline crease with, to a gentle degree of fold by pressing down on top of, uh, on top of both of these uh, perforated sections here with our thumbs and with two digits that are free from the back while supporting this plane the back of our card you just want to push forward on the center sections so they start to protrude as volumes towards us but only to a very shallow degree of fold as you can see here really we don't want to be over emphasizing any of the creases uh, early on uh, without deploying in, in conjunction all the other areas as well so just a gentle um, establishment of, of folding to begin with and then we start to move in on certain areas and catch up with with those undeployed sections so you can either start with the front or the or, or the which is the base of your design or the top which is the back um, so if we go with the the front first again we're just gently kind of pushing forward on our on our plane on our general plane which is this one here providing the the main structure of our pier and making sure that all these quite gentle support struts don't get bent out of shape you might want to just slightly adjust as you go along um, on these little um, decorate decoration elements here and once you've reached a shallow degree of fold again you just want to be catching up with the back of your design so again all you need to do is just just literally push out your center shape with your digits from the back whilst holding down on this baseline crease uh, or these baseline creases and your your backing uh, card and <clears throat> and then progressively you are kind of working towards the center really from your edges so so as we have done the top and the bottom uh, and the sides now we can move towards the center section of our card and again whilst we're supporting the the back and the general kind of overall shape in our hands we want to use one of our fingers to press forward from underneath this um, this kind of um, architectural section here progressively and going in incremental stages and this bit is the trickiest bit really to um, to uh, deploy because as you're trying to do quite a lot of things with all your um, fingers and and obviously trying to concentrate on everything at the same time which is why I I think it is quite a challenging fold but um but as you're going along you are sort of stroking the sections from from the back and that gives you the effect of, of of a push but more gently across those planes and you are kind of developing them more consistently if you're doing that and once you get to a certain degree of fold you can actually zoom in to certain areas by further deploying detailed structures such as the one um, the foremost one here uh, architecturally uh, that protrudes from this plane here and again you, you just want to do very shallow degrees of fold because if you go too far then then the paper starts to buckle in areas but as you can see already our shapes are starting to protrude and once you've done a certain degree of fold which is caught up with the edges of our designs in the center you can go back to the overall 
layout design and start to further develop the folds across your uh, entire design. And this can sometimes do what just happened there, which things start to pop back, but all you need to do is just adjust that again with a gentle push from behind. And there again, you can see you want to be sort of supporting the center section whilst you're doing this gentle pushing from behind. And again, you can support the planes by use of your fingers from the back, as you can see here, whilst you are pushing the entire kind of back of your design forwards on top of those center sections. But this is probably the most tricky part of this collapse is not to damage those tabs, those delicate tabs that are supporting your piece. Now, <clears throat> as you're going forwards, you can start to pinch your design, which is literally done across these um, uh, structures with your fingers. Um, by, by actually kind of gently pushing on one plane and pressing out on the vertical planes that are um, protruding from those uh, horizontal planes, as it were. And at the same time, don't neglect to each, each time you go a bit forward is to adjust the back of the card to sort of come forward with it consistently. And slowly but surely, you will get to about a 90 degree fold that you can see in profile here. And you can probably see these, these kind of pinching um, techniques more clearly from the sides as I'm showing here. You literally want to be supporting these areas, these um, horizontal planes with your thumb and fingers from one side whilst at the same time pulling down and pinching from the front as well. So it's a combination of those two folds and as you see any kind of buckling areas you just need to adjust those consistently kind of together and progressively fold down your shapes collapsing them as layers and you're literally kind of going across your design with this sort of pinching technique until you get to a full collapse as you have done here and <clears throat> once you get to this stage you just need to tap down on your card to establish those creases fully and you should end up with something that looks like this This has got quite a few um, layers and volumes that are, are consistently supporting one another, which is why it is quite a tricky fold. But um, but it, uh, being a challenge, uh, it does give rise to that feeling of um, satisfaction when you've got your fully um, collapsed and um, and neat finished piece, as you can see here. Um, this is now ready for your um, personal touch and decoration and in order to cover this void um, at the back of your card you might want to use a transparency backing sheet which I always do um, and if it's a color back to transparency you can get some really exciting visual effects and light and shadow plays as you can see here uh, which is why I always recommend using uh, such a uh, combination of papers in order to to get some really exciting results visually um, all you need to do is just um, secure that backing sheet using uh, some tabs of glue in each of the corners and you've got your finished card ready to go as you can see here so hope you enjoy that project <clears throat> and do check out 
all of my other tutorials available online. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.